Well, we have a little Jim Bowie love today. We are looking at the Ontario SP-10 Raider Bowie. And guys, man, am I in love with this knife. And for $40, getting a massive USA-made 1095 steel Bowie knife like this is epic and really hard to come by. So I am just ultra excited to walk you through this knife, what it can do, what it can't do today. Uh, I went over to Amazon, I picked this up for $40. Prices fluctuate, I will have links in the description below throughout this video for this knife as well as some competitive options we're gonna be talking about, not only over to Blade HQ, but also over to Amazon. Prices fluctuate between $40 and $60. So, you know, just kinda anywhere in there. And regardless, if it's on the high end of 60 bucks, on the low end of 40 bucks, this is a phenomenal knife. Right out of the gate, I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm giving away the ending. This thing rocks for a lot of reasons that we're going to look at and discuss. Some things have been kind of upgraded. I've seen some more attention to detail in this knife than I have in some other previous Ontarios. The sheath has been upgraded. There's a lot going on with this video, guys. And I'm just really excited to talk you through what this knife can do, show you what it can do. You know, we like to throw these things, um, you know, to and put them to the test. And we're gonna do that today with this Arkansas toothpick. So let's go ahead, get to it, see what this knife can do. Man, has this seen some use and has stood up to it. Really looking forward, guys, again, just to running you down and running down this knife with you and what it can do. USA made 1095 steel with a black traction coat on there, quarter inch thick, saber grind, uh, 9.75 total blade length, about 8.75 cutting edge. I think I said saber grind, massive clip. Obviously, they're uh, in just just a beast coming in at about 22 ounces. We are going to be running as brethren here um, real quick, and we'll be talking about some comparisons just to kind of help you out as well. SP5 here. Um, this is again about 10 inches, nine inch cutting edge, a lot lighter at about 15 um, ounces, so quite a bit lighter. And then we also have the SP8 Survival Machete. Only about a seven and a half inch cutting edge, but again, 23 ounces, quarter inch thick, saber grind, massive, massive, heavy choppers. Uh, and just, I don't know how Ontario does it, the, the insane amount of value. So um, one of the things we wanna hit right out of the gate is the relief edge, guys. This relief edge was insane. And one of my major complaints I've had in the past with Ontario is that most of their knives come pretty dull, uh, particularly in their SP line very wide grind angles that are sure they're going to stand up to chopping but that's about it you can't do any real cutting tasks with them whatsoever not the case on this sp10 i really hope this is uh, something that is showing of things to come it was razor sharp out of the box i had to do zero prepping everything all the work you saw was the factory edge and that is super impressive this is the first sp model that i've ever had that i haven't had to do my own edge on it so i was super happy with that razor sharp still holding a great edge after all the work particularly down here by the belly i can still feel it i mean if i just run my finger i'm gonna slice my hand wide open so this guy was awesome awesome relief edge for feather sticking notching cordage cutting uh you know going through seat belt you know if this was you want to rock this as a giant tactical knife you can totally do it um because this has got an awesome wicked edge for the finer finer detailed stuff i was really happy with that you know sure you can put a big dull you know chopping edge on it like an axe but can you carve with it can you cut and, and feather stick and make a, a, a big you know bundle so that i could start a fire this blade has that capability right out of the box and i was nice really notch. happy to see that now obviously chopping um this weighing in at 22 ounces heavy beast heavy heavy beast saber grind saber grinds are my favorite for chopping on larger knives and it has a great sweet spot right here with that large belly, good weight distribution, definitely a little blade heavy, uh, really pounded through uh, the wood. Was really happy with the chunks it was removing. Really does a great job. 
And as an example, the SP5, because it's a full flat grind and weighs only 15 ounces, it just doesn't compete in the chopping arena. Uh, in knives like that, you know, weight does matter and where the weight is distributed. And obviously this is like the widest portion of the blade, sweet spot, think baseball, you're gonna crack it out of the park with this knife. So if you need a big blade that can do feather sticking and notching and that type of stuff, but then also do heavy chopping, this does have absolutely that capability. Batoning, obviously quarter inch saber grind. I mean, it's split wood like crazy. The, the trade-off with Bowie knives is that they're gonna have strength at the tip that some other blades may not, particularly like full flat grinds um, uh, in that capacity. And they're definitely better for stabbing. They're gonna get in and penetrate deeper into things. But I mean, you know, it's not a, a thin swedge, but it's a swedge, I mean, it's a clip. And if you pound it there, you're gonna destroy your batoning stick a, a lot faster. Now, thankfully, it's got a big, giant quarter inch flat spine back here. Just so to get it started and get that initial pounding through, uh, was really easy and doesn't damage the stick and that's usually where you have the most damage but uh you were you are you're going to damage your batonic stick a lot faster but it will split wood really well with that saber grind and that quarter inch thickness and then obviously uh the tip great for stabbing penetrating as i've said strength strong as well you're not going to you know worry about snapping that thing unless you're being really stupid uh, so it's going to be able to be a better better stabber then even this guy, because it has more of like a sweep up, even though it came with a sharpened clip and I dulled it out um, just for batoning reasons. And obviously this is nothing. I mean, you're gonna pry with it, but that's about it. So the handle is like you would expect in an exact mirror image of all the other SP line. It is a rubberized craton, really well done, good ribbing in there, really contoured, a lot better uh, ergonomics than you're gonna find a lot of like clunky blocky knives um, that have like handle scales. So that is a plus with the SP line, this rubberized craton, super tough and durable. I've never had one of SP's knives, uh, or excuse me, Ontario's knives loosen up in the handle. They really do a good job uh, with the full tang through to that back lanyard hole right there. A good rubberized guard and a good little uh, bird beak hook back there to kind of keep the knife in place if you are doing lots of chopping. And that rubberized texturing is gonna be really comfortable in cold conditions. So that's another plus, you know, in low temperatures, if you don't have your gloves on, that's a big plus versus, you know, holding a, a knife that's gonna be really cold and, you know, just uh, cause fatigue in your hand. Some people complain of vibrations through SP handles, never had that issue, don't have that issue on the SP-10. I like the particularly in this setup, how they kept with the rubberized guard here, like what we see on like the SP-5 and the SP-8, and then put the big large kind of combat guard that you would know, um, you know, from like a K-Bar fighting knife, more of a, a fighting style and squeeze that in between. So what that means is when you are gripping it right here, you're not right up against the metal. You still have that little bit of rubber keeping your hand. So if you are doing stabbing and thrusting, you're not just slamming your hand in the rubber in the metal, you have that rubber guard still protecting you. I really like that. That was a really cool, I don't know if they meant to do that, if they're just trying to keep you know budget simple and not come up with a new handle design, but I really like that. It's better than a lot of other combat buoys like this, uh, that you just have a stick rubberized handle straight into metal and it can be uncomfortable. The other aspect as well, so for chopping it was great, zero complaints, really stayed in my hand, fantastic. Um, obviously combat, you're gonna have that huge guard to keep you from you know, sliding up if you were gonna use this in that capacity as a soldier knife, a large, large you know, uh, self-defense tool. And then um, finer work, it has enough of a ricasso here that I can absolutely use it as a choil. And then I can work with it right here. Now, is this like ideal? Do I wanna be making feather sticks all day with this? No, but do I, if I need to make two or three, can I do it without any sort of fatiguing? Um, the the uh, guard here is, doesn't have any sharp angles on it. It's been kind of milled a little bit uh, so that it doesn't bite into my hand. Didn't feel uncomfortable. You know, if I have to, I can get over like that. And, it, and it, it, yes, it's a guard. So obviously it's not like this. This is obviously way more, you know, maneuverable, more, you know, options for gripping the knife. But if you are going to go with this larger, heavier buoy, it's doable and it absolutely workable, particularly with the finer detailed work with this guard for such a large knife with a combat style guard. All right, so we're gonna look at sheath. Now the old sheath on the SP-10 was like the SP-8. It was this hybrid kind of leather, uh, nylon, it was okay. Um, but I really like this direction that they're going with their newest um, rendition. And I did uh, see some comments on my Instagram posts. That's a great way 
to see what's up and coming, uh, to get other feedback. Ontario responded to you out there that already have an SP10, but maybe you want to upgrade to this sheath. If you reach out to them, um, they can help you out. You may have to pay for it, but they might be able to ship it over to you um, and get you uh, this new sheath. So it's a nice nylon sheath, really well built. Uh, for the price, I'm not really, I don't really have anything negative to say about it. It's got good rivets, lashing points, Molly compatible back through here, which is a fantastic feature. Just really good stitching. No frills, no extra pocket. I like that. So it's just nice and slim. It has a first loop over that's like a double weave on a button right there to go over the guard. We have a second attachment right here as well as a third paracord attachment so you could make this jump ready if you did want to use that in the military be able to pull this out so again you're going to see here this thing is uh on a swivel so righties or lefties it is ambidextrous and you can put it so that you're not going to slice the nylon when you're pulling it out of the sheath good polymer insert in there doesn't really rattle too much and this right here is adjustable good large belt loop it is not uh, molly or excuse me not molly but um velcro and button like some k bars and other companies out there but i think it's uh, very doable particularly with the the molly right here i was able to just run it right through one of my packs i was uh trekking with made it very accessible and uh, quick to attach and then again the very very well done i have zero complaints for the price point that we're looking at for this knife with this sheath this is one of the better nylon sheaths on the market right now so i'll just wrap this up with really performance you know where do i feel like each one of these kind of comes in and what you know to help you better choose uh, now being five, 15 ounces really lightweight nimble and very controllable as long as uh, again i'm hoping that these edges are coming better and the full flat grind this isn't the best chopper uh, i've seen on the market it does okay better than some other knives out there but you're gonna get a very large blade to be able to spawn, span lots of wood great ricasso there to be able to do finer work so you can do a lot of kind of medium to light duty tasks with this machete uh, or just machete work it'd be very light if you're just going through really like lightweight thin green stuff um, maybe in you know the Everglades or something like that this would be a great option these two guys are pretty heavy and would fatigue your hand a lot if you're doing lots and lots of machete work lots and lots of swinging this thing you could swing all day as long as you're connecting with lightweight green material and it, it would go through easily the sp8 is really kind of like that do everything indestructible i mean they're like look at how thick that that chisel if you will kind of uh design is i mean you can pry with this thing super blade heavy uh saw backs for notches you know lower grind i mean this is like a tank and a half not super controllable um so that's the one drawback with that but i mean if you're like yeah i need you know like mad max survival tool that might be the tool for you and then uh, the buoy is kind of more of that blending of the two uh, it weighs about the, as much as the SP, but it's just a little bit better balanced, a little bit more controllable for the close-up work, you know, like fine detail work. And then obviously with the massive clip and then the guard, you could use it for more combat, jungle warfare type of stuff, you know, um... I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, predator style going out there and you got to go find your uh, buddies and you got lied to by your uh, old military pal. And now you got to survive a, an alien um, trying to rip your spine out. Then the SP-10 might be the tool for you. Oh, oh, sorry. Just got to get that thing out of my tooth. Well, I think Jim Bowie would be proud of this knife because I love it. Not only has it the capability to do finer tasks that I was really not expecting, particularly with these new relief ed the new relief edge that I see that I haven't always seen on Spec Plus lines in the past, but also just the weight, the handle ergonomics, uh, the guard working in conjunction. I'm able to get over it, you know, do the finer stuff, stab, um, baton, chop. I mean, you name it, guys. I mean, tell me a thing that you didn't see this do well. I mean, I can't really think of it, particularly for the size, the weight, and again, the price. We're not talking about some, you know, Taiwanese or Chinese made or, you know, overseas produced knife. I mean, we're talking about a USA made 1095 steel blade that's going to, you know, kick butt and take names. I mean, seriously, in every single way. So uh, if you like Bowie knives or maybe you haven't and you're starting to consider it and you want to try one out, I would highly recommend this blade. I love it. You guys are going to see it in more videos down the line and compare competitive options and just different stuff. We're going to have a lot of fun with this knife for a long, long time. So thank you guys so much for coming over here today and checking out the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share this video. You current subscribers are epic and awesome, and I love you. Hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. That makes sure that's in your news feed. If you're not a subscriber, I invite you to become part of the GT family. We're throwing up videos like this every single week. We have an awesome community of people that comment and share, and it's just awesome to, to have 
this type of community that we're all involved in here. And I invite you to become part of that community today by hitting that subscribe button. And uh, if you guys uh, haven't checked us out on social media, Instagram, Facebook, other places like that, I invite you to check those out as well. It's always a great way to see what's up and coming, different way to connect with me. And finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.